and uh, uh, the the bells we can hear them singing Santa Slay. I've got Santa on my lapel. Well, what do you think of when you think of Christmas? I guess most people think of a gift. Don't you look forward to opening your present? And uh, uh, also a Christmas tree. Well, those two things are not entirely biblical, but there we go. I want to talk to you today about a gift and a tree. And they are in the Bible, a gift and a tree. But it's Christmas and it's, it's, we're expecting wonderful gifts. Well, today is the 24th and you're not supposed to open your presents, but Vicky has given me my presents early. So I'm going to show them what they are. The first one is Billy Graham nearing home. <laughs> okay, well, um, that's a lot in there about retirement. I don't know if she's trying to tell me something. And also dying. But anyway, we'll, we'll let's see what the second one is. Oh, this is very good. Miracle hair restore. <laughs> I don't need it, do I? Do I need it? You're wonderful. Do I need it? Well, somebody here said yes. I'll, I'll, you're not getting a Christmas card. <laughs> let's see what the last one is. Weight loss, anti-aging, and so anti-aging cream and weight loss. So I, I suppose Vicky is trying to tell me I'm overweight, I'm old, and uh, I'm losing my hair. And I don't need any of those presents, do I? Thank you so much, thank you so much. So you see, when you get a gift tomorrow, you will hopefully look to it and say, oh, this is really what I needed. This is really what I needed. And uh, if those, I receive those gifts, I will say, no, I don't need those gifts. Now, let me apply this then to God's gift, because when I open this, this has got my present in it. This has got my real Christmas present in it. What is my real Christmas present, of course? It's God's gift to the world. I want you never to forget that when you think of Christmas gifts. Always remember that the greatest gift of all is God's gift to the world. But the question then is, do I need that gift? I remember you once speaking and saying, just imagine if the, the children came down at Christmas Day and then didn't open their presents and said, oh, we want to do something else. Or opened a present and then said, oh, whatever. And just pushed it aside. God's gift is Jesus. And the word Jesus means, we, saw it, we heard it in the story there, rescuer. It means saviour. And uh, John, later on, John the Baptist said, behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And when the angel gave the name, it wasn't the angel's idea. It was the father's idea who sent his son. And he told the angel what to say. And he said, call his name Jesus, Saviour, because he will save his people from their sins. So, if I am to receive this gift, like... Am I losing my hair? Maybe I do need it. But God gives me a gift, a saviour from sin. Am I a sinner? Do I need this gift? Well, will you look at this gift and say, whatever, push it aside? Or will you really look at it and say, I'm going to receive God's gift? It's salvation from sin. He shall save his people from their sins. Well, what is sin? Well, we all know sins like moral lapses, lies, harsh words, impure thoughts. But actually, they are symptoms of sin. 
They are sins, and he's come to save us from them, but they're symptoms of sin. What is sin? Well, sin is discord. Maybe in a close relationship, like a marriage or a family. Discord between nations. But most of all, discord in our hearts. We're out of step with our destiny. We're separated from God. In an emptiness, a sense of hopelessness, no purpose, or even cosmic loneliness, a feeling of being alone. Jesus is the Savior from sin, and I need that Savior. But where do I find that salvation? God gave his son, but he gave him to be the perfect sacrifice. And then we think of the tree. Now, a Christmas tree is actually a pagan symbol. Something adopted by Christians many years ago uh, as a symbol. I don't know why they did it. It's not particularly biblical. And uh, there's a Christmas tree. It's chosen because it's a symbol of life. It's chosen because it's an evergreen. It's always green. We decorate it like that. And it's supposed to be like a tree of life. But it's really actually not a very good picture of the tree of life. Because in the Bible, the Bible calls the cross of Jesus a tree. You may not know that, but the Bible on about four occasions says that Jesus hung on a piece of wood and it calls it a tree. And the tree of life is where Jesus paid for our sins and was our substitute. He suffered in my place that I might be forgiven. So the tree is the cross. The gift is Jesus and the tree it's not a Christmas tree. It's the cross of Jesus. Jesus is the perfect sacrifice to reconcile a guilty world with God. Now I received my gift, Jesus. I received him 50 years ago. And I received my gift when I knelt by the tree, by the cross. I always want you to remember this every time, every Christmas, but especially this one, the gift and the tree. I received my gift 50 years ago. And we come to a baby, God's gift, but we look to a cross, a tree, the cross where Jesus became our saviour from sin I received my gift 50 years ago I wasn't born in a Christian family we never read the Bible we didn't go to church even at Christmas and Easter and Christmas for us as a family was just alcohol food and television we could never agree back in those days there were only I think four channels or three or four channels I'm not sure uh, whether it was three or four but in our house we could never agree on what to watch so at Christmas time we always got four televisions <laughs> so we could all watch something different well that was our Christmas and then someone told me that Jesus could change my life and at the age of 18 I knelt and gave my life to Jesus and I received him as God's gift right into me and he changed my life. I, I remember when I, when I did it, uh, there was another guy in, in the same town um, who also gave his life, his name was David Pickering and we were in a small village in Derbyshire and uh, we both gave our lives to Christ around the same time. We began to study the Bible together. 
went to church together to the local Baptist church, wonderful pastor there. It was a great, wonderful experience. And his life has changed, my life has changed. Fifty years ago, when I received Jesus as God's gift to me, and you have to receive that gift. You have to go to the cross and ask Jesus to forgive your sins and to change your heart. That's what really the Christmas message is all about. Well, I did that 50 years ago. David Pickering, my friend, did it 50 years ago. But he died two years ago. About three years ago, he was diagnosed with a brain tumour. And in the about three months before he died, he wrote a letter. He put it through the door of every house in the village. And he said in the letter, he said, you know me, he said, I just want to tell you, I won't be with you much longer. I'm going to die in a few weeks' time. But I want to tell you that I know where I'm going. I want to tell you that, and he said the same thing as I've just told you, 50 years ago I received Christ, I received God's gift. I knew that my sins were forgiven, my life was changed, and and." It was wonderful. And he said, not just that, but I found such a joy in having God in my life, Christ in my life. And he's been with me on the whole journey. He's brought brightness and light and joy. And uh, he gave a little story of his life. And he said, I want you to know that I'm dying and I won't be with you much longer, but I know where I'm going and I'm, I'm trusting in Jesus as my saviour. I um, read a few words from a will this uh, last week. It's um, a will by a very famous American banker, J.P. Morgan. And I won't read what he said, but he also, when he died, he put in his will these words. He said to his children, he said, I want you to know, he said, you're getting all this money. He said, but I that's not really important, he said. What's really important is that you know that I'm trusting in Jesus as my Saviour. I've received him as my Saviour. And I want you to receive God's gift. And I want you to go to God's tree and receive the forgiveness of sins and a new life at the cross. Because if you do, it won't just change your period of time at Christmas, it will change your whole life. Call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. And the Bible says, Christ died for sinners to reconcile us to God. May I just pray with you in closing? Let's pray. Lord Jesus, thank you that you are the gift of God to a guilty, sin-sick world. But that's, that's us. I need you. Thank you that you're the one who forgave my sins and came into my life and gave me hope of heaven and eternal life. I thank you, Jesus, and I receive it at the tree of life, the cross where you died for my sins. And I pray, write this message on every life here in this room that they too will receive your gift as you, they bow at the cross and turn to you in Jesus' name. Amen.